Amen. Amen. Oh, I think I got it right off. <clears throat> Till the storm passes by, 209. And uh, what a friend to take us through the storm. 209. Till the storm passes by. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the dark of the midnight have I off hid my face while the storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of the hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispered, there is no need to try, for there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise where the storms never darken the sky. Till the storm passes over, Till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. When the long night has ended, and the storms come no more. Let me stand in thy presence on the bright, peaceful shore in the land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, Till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Amen. You may be seated, Pastor. Well, it's good to be in church tonight and uh, off the stage. Yeah, you can leave it, leave it on if you'd like. Lots of things to pray about tonight. And uh, so let's get right into our prayer sheets. If you need one, uh, put your hand up. Brother Dave will get you a prayer sheet, but I think everybody has one. Uh, we'll start on the back. Uh, be praying for uh, myself and the deacons for discernment and wisdom. Be praying as well for each other. Uh, for strength, courage, faith, wisdom, a hedge of protection around each one. Be praying the Holy Spirit keeps working in our area. Um, be praying the Holy Spirit works tomorrow night at our uh, at our special care home at night. Looking forward to that. And uh, you never know uh, who's understanding what, but uh, there are some workers that come to the meeting as well. And uh, we just want to go there and preach the gospel, and we'll see what the Lord's going to do. So be praying that the Holy Spirit would work there tomorrow night as well. I'll uh, be praying for uh, more more folks to join our church, uh, for laborers as well, and church unity, uh, revival individually. i uh, be praying for each other's family's salvation. be praying for our musicians, and it was nice to have a, an addition tonight with Amelia on the flute. So that is a, that's a blessing as well. And so we look forward to, to hearing more of that and them using their, their talents and abilities for the Lord. So praise the Lord. 
Uh, I'll be praying for other ministries as well, for Doug Wood and Len Crow and the Orphanage Ministries, for Amazing Grace Baptist Church, Brother Brandon, his Bible Institute uh, they have down there, uh, Brother Fielder, Brother Brown as well, both evangelists that have been here uh, in the past. I'll be praying for churches uh, in our country, in our neighboring country, United States. Uh, more, more and more seem to be closing, not, uh, not opening or staying open. And so be praying that uh, the churches would stand firm and stay open. Um, be praying for the, the Smiths down in West Virginia as well, and uh, Strange Creek Baptist Church as well as Liberty Baptist Church. Uh, Blessed Hope Baptist Church in Bridgewater as well. Continue to pray for them. They, uh, they still have plans eventually to do some form of a building project, so continue to pray uh, for them as well. Uh, the Thren family, Brother Brian and his ministry as well, and the Gilbert family as well as uh, Brother Messick, and we're looking forward to seeing him in a couple weeks uh, here at our Faith Promise meeting. I'll uh, be praying as well for church ministries, our soul winning and outreach, as well as our live stream. i uh, be praying as well for our Sunday school classes and the different fellowships that we have, uh, the card ministry, uh, puppets, signs, and special care home, as I mentioned already, we'll be heading there uh, tomorrow night. Looking forward to that, and then be praying for wisdom for what to do as far as van ministry and different things we can use uh, that blessing uh, for as well. Uh, be praying for our missionaries, uh, the Nisleys, the Shawls. There is a new letter uh, from the Shawls out there. I didn't uh, get a chance to read the entire thing yet, but one thing I noticed straight in the center uh, was the announcement of a engagement. Uh, their daughter Anna and brother Chris Messick's son Zach are engaged. We'll be getting married, so that's, uh, uh, you know, some people say Facebook official, well, it's prayer letter official, <laughs> so it's uh, on, the, uh, on their prayer letter there, so uh, you'll be praying for them as they, uh, they make plans and, and start that uh, chapter of their lives as well. Uh, the Buckingham family, pray for them. Uh, on their recent letter, they announced on there that they're going to be uh, uh, looking at purchasing a building, and so that, uh, just be praying about that, that they'd be able to get... Uh, the, the financing that they need and that they'd be able to uh, negotiate the price down a little bit and, and all of those things. Uh, but that's an exciting time uh, for that church as well. And it's uh, kind of centrally located, I guess, between uh, Campbellton and Bathurst. So uh, people from Campbellton would travel 30 minutes, people from Bathurst 30 minutes up there so for church. And so uh, it seems... Uh, Seems uh, of the Lord, so we'll just be praying about that, that they'd be able to get that building uh, soon. I'll be praying for Brother Joey and his family down in Kemp as well, and uh, for El Bethel Bible Camp. I know they're going to be starting uh, work there soon, and uh, going to be a new, um, a second bathroom facility. So the one that's there is going to be uh, for the guys, and they're building a new one for the ladies, and so that's uh, going to double the double the toilets and showers and all that, so praise the Lord, That's uh, it's definitely needed, so i uh, be praying about that, and uh, they're continuing to make plans for a tabernacle and all those things as well, but just, uh, they're going to be doing, uh, Brother Brandon and I were talking at Teen Thunder, and he wants to try to get uh, the buildings at least accessible three out of four seasons a year, uh, everything's going to be winterized, so uh, the, they're going to insulate uh, a bunch of the cabins, and make the plumbing and water run so that that could be used in the winter. We could, they drain the buildings, but they can also just go to use them again uh, and all of that. So uh, just be praying about that and other uh, ministry opportunities for the camp. Uh, you know, he would like to see, it's not uh, just Amazing Grace's camp, it's all of our camps to use God's camp, but all the churches around uh, to, to use it. So uh, just be praying about that and different uh, ministry uh, opportunities as well. Uh, by Nihon Children's Home, be praying for the, the home over there. Uh, Brother Bud and his family, uh, the Jenkins family in Ireland, we got a new letter from them recently as well. Uh, the Muckles in Snow Lake and Brother Muscat. Uh, uh, Melanie Ellis as well, as, uh, we, some of us got to meet her uh, at Teen Thunder, and that was a blessing as well. Uh, the Mustard family, and then Brother Caesar and his family, and we have a, they, he has a video from when they were, uh, when they were away recently. And uh, we'll play that uh, in one of the upcoming services here. It just came in this afternoon. So uh, we'll, we'll play that for you folks here soon as well. I uh, pray for our country. Uh, be praying for salvation and wisdom uh, for our leaders, for God's mercy 
uh, for Christians to stand firm. Our healthcare system, our school system, and just our country in general is just not uh, kind of shake your head sometimes, I guess. But uh, the Lord knows all of that, and He's in control. But uh, pray for pray for our country. Uh, if you go inside to the cancer list, I'll be praying as well for uh, the names listed here: Hines, Alex, Kelly. Uh, Kim, Teresa, Daniel, Akilam, Fred, Maxwell, Neil Lewis, Miranda Ching, uh, Kevin McNutt, uh, Paul, and uh, Carol. And uh, there is, uh, there is uh, an update on that letter as well about Carol, and they're going to be traveling, I think, this Friday to Denmark. Uh, so we'll be praying about that uh, as well. Anything else on our cancer list? And if you're watching online, make sure you get your requests in there. Brother Ed will uh, announce those for us. But anything else on our cancer list? All right. Let's go to other health needs. I'll be praying for the names that are here. We've got Jack down through uh, the Dubois family. Uh, but there are some that have appointments coming up. Wanda has some appointments. Second, the 18th, and the 25th. Um, Taylor has a, a CT scan on the 28th. Uh, Jeff has some appointments as well, the 2nd and the 17th. Um, also, uh, Shelly has a surgery on May the 6th. Um, and there's, a, there's some other things on here too. Missy has an appointment next, uh, a week from this Friday. And so we'll be praying for her. She wants to be able to put weight on her leg. And uh, that appointment will, uh, they'll give her the green light with that, Lord willing. So um, just be praying for her. She's not feeling well. Got a bit of a, a cold tonight. <clears throat> uh, so we, if you could be praying about that as well. Um, but there's many other, uh, many other names, many other needs uh, on here as well. Um, we have uh, Alice King, who is not doing well. Um, not ex yeah, in palliative care, not expected to uh, last much longer. So we'll be praying for her and Eric and the family. Um, and there was uh, Brother Phil Seeley uh, in, in Moncton, and, uh, well, um, Miss Cindy, uh, their, their mother passed away this morning. And so if you could be praying for, I know this is on miscellaneous, but just kind of uh, came to my mind right now. Um, a lot of them are over. You know, Brother Brandon, Brother Joey, and their families uh, are over in St. John right now. And so there'll be a, a funeral and arrangements and things in the coming days. So uh, if you'd pray for them, I know that they would appreciate that. Uh, do we have any updates, uh, additions, subtractions on our health needs list? Yes, Ms. Dell. Okay. So pray specifically that Brett would find a doctor so that uh, things would start to go forward uh, for him. Anything else? Yes, Miss Annette. Okay. So Miss Annette has been having some issue with her uh, right eye, and uh, she's waiting on an appointment. And so uh, just pray that the issue would happen uh, while she's at the, at the appointment when she gets it. So pray she gets the appointment soon, and pray they'd be able to find the problem when she does go. Anything else on her health needs list? All right. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. So Ed has to get in to see Dr. James. Uh, his doctor is going to be calling to get try to push that uh, forward. So pray that he'd be able to get in quickly. He's got some tests he has to get done. Uh, so if you could pray for that, please. 
Anything else health-wise? Just pray that, um, I know Taylor has a, an appointment coming up soon for her knee, but uh, pray they'd be able to get the surgery date soon as well. Uh, it popped out again on uh, Monday evening and took quite a while to come back in place. So uh, just be praying that that uh, process would get expedited as well. And pray for Brother Conrad. He's on a waiting list for knee replacements. And uh, pray that that gets sped up as well. So, and, you know, yeah, mobile, but still be nice to get the, get the right fix done. So be praying uh, for that as well. Yes, Mary had surgery on her wrist this morning, uh, so we'll be praying for her uh, for recovery uh, as well. <coughs> yes? So can you just tell me that acid reflux, I got that. Okay, okay. All right, so Helen um, is having some issues with gout, so we'll be praying for her. She had the wrong medications and misinformation, so we'll be praying for her. And then Carson Campbell, uh, this Tish's uh, son, has acid reflux, a heart murmur, and blood pressure issues. So they're going to treat the acid reflux, but don't want to uh, start a young, young guy on uh, heart medications. So we'll be praying they can figure something out with that. <coughs> And, yes. Okay. Charity Hopkins. This is a, a girl from uh, um, Brother Parrott's church in Halifax. Um, she has cellulitis and it's moved um, in her arm into her ha uh, fingers and also has broken her wrist in the last week or so, so if you could be praying for uh, her. Anything else health-wise? All right, let's go to miscellaneous then. Uh, be praying for Bethany and Clarence. Bethany has uh, some appointments coming up uh, in April. And uh, so be praying for that. Uh, Trina and Bethany will be traveling. Um, what's that? Sunday afternoon home Wednesday. Yeah, Sunday afternoon and then home uh, Wednesday. So if you could be praying for them. Uh, also be praying for uh, Brother Dave's going to be home alone. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the dogs, you know. They'll, they'll, they'll keep him in line. <laughs> oh, my. We'll be praying for safety for them as they travel up there and, uh, and uh, be praying for the appointment as well for, for that to go through uh, with no issues. Um, she has two of them, so it has to go up, come back, and then go up again uh, on the eight, uh, for the 18th. Yeah, they, we, they, we don't know who's taking her up for the 18th appointment at this point, so, uh, but just continue to pray for that one. Uh, be praying for heat pumps for the church as well, uh, for... Uh, our kids that are in school, uh, many folks also need family doctors. I'll be praying for uh, David and Ashley and their families as well. Uh, I'll be praying as well for uh, Scott Mahoney, uh, the sale of Miss Diane's car, uh, Shelly Stevens' house as well. Uh, I'll be praying for uh, my father-in-law as well and his uh, plowing. Hopefully, I guess I said that. <laughs> we think leaving you on there is just bringing the snowstorms or... <laughs> 
All right, we'll take him off then. <laughs> won't be long, he'll be gone for a few weeks and they won't be able to call him in anyway. So, <laughs> all right, you can be praying for them. They'll be, uh, they'll be traveling uh, in April as well. Uh, so you can keep, pray for safety. Ninth to the thirtieth of April. Uh, I'll be praying for Ed as well and his clients, uh, Amelia, and uh, search for a job. Um, Zach coming to church as well. I'll be praying for Carter and that situation there. Uh, the Osteen family as well. Uh, we mentioned Brother uh, Eric King already, and uh, we got Carter there twice. So we'll uh, we'll pray for him two times. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Anything else on our miscellaneous list? Okay, Will uh, Will is going to be traveling next week as well. <clears throat> We're going to be doing some work on the van on Friday, uh, so you pray that everything goes uh, okay there. Just a little maintenance things and trailer hitch and just a few things like that. So, uh, Brother Dave and myself and my father-in-law will be working on that. So, uh, just pray everything goes well and I you know. Uh, her, I don't know her last name. She married again later in life, and I can't remember her, uh, her new married name. But it's, uh, like Phil Seeley's mother. So it's the Seeley's, the Lakes, the Rings. They're all connected there, so. Uh, I can't remember, Sterling. His first name was Sterling, her uh, new husband, but I can't. He had passed away uh, a few months back, but I can't remember. It's a, it's an it's a different last name, and I can't remember. Yes. Yeah. I can't remember her anyway. The 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 Seelys, the Rings, and the the Lakes. They're all uh, connected through through them. So. Anything else on our miscellaneous list? Yes. So she applied at the Garden Center at Kent. And they're looking over her application. So pray about that. The Lord's will be done with that. Anything else on her miscellaneous list? All right. Unspoken. So we got Liz, Bruce, Dave, John and Jess, uh, Helen, Colleen, Trina, Delphine, Jeremiah, Rhonda, and uh, Miss Annette. Okay, Miss Annette's can come off. Any other updates, uh, additions, subtractions on the unspoken requests? Oh, hi, sorry. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Put Miss Diane on the uh, unspoken list. All right. No, not yet. Um, we do have the, uh, well, I have a picture of the lean release. So we can start uh, start moving in the next, uh, next steps with that. So uh, I don't know what all is going to be involved with that as of yet. Because uh, Darren is the executor. <laughs> And he is out west, as you know. So there could be a few uh, different hoops and things that we may have to jump through with that. So, um, yeah, we just uh, continue to pray. And we'll uh, hopefully in the next week or so, we'll have that uh, situation figured out as well. So a long time coming, but uh, we're, we're at the place where we can start to move. So uh, praise the Lord for that. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, the bridge that uh, was uh, hit there in Baltimore, um, be praying for all those who are involved, families of people who are missing, um, just be praying about that.
just never know. Stuff like that just. Hmm. Anything else? All right. Well, Brother Dave, would you pray for these tonight, please? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. Lord, we thank you for just a wonderful day, Lord. We can come to your house and lift our voices to you in song and praise. We do thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for our daily, Lord, pastors and deacons, discernment, uh, guidance, wisdom, Lord. Pray for each other's strength, uh, faith and courage, wisdom. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around this church, around our pastor and his family, and each person individually, Lord, and anyone who goes through that door, Lord, that you would keep Satan pushed back, keep him out of here, Lord, and anyone that would do us harm. Lord, pray for the Holy Spirit to keep seeking, speaking, moving in lost souls in our area, Lord, and, and Lord, as the weather gets better, Lord, as we can get out and around and, and talk to people, Lord, and, and tell them about you, Lord. Lord, we pray for faithful families to join the church, uh, church laborers, uh, Lord, we pray for unity as well in our church, Lord, and we do thank you for uh, the wonderful uh, family you've given us, Lord, and, and we do thank you for that, Lord. Pray for revival, Lord, uh, in our community, uh, within and uh, our towns and villages, Lord, that, uh, Lord, that you would... Uh, you give a great revival, Lord, and we know that our time is short, Lord, and we do pray, Lord, that uh, we can honor and glorify you by uh, telling people about you, Lord. Lord, we pray for each other's lost family members, Lord, and, and need of salvation, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that, uh, that uh, Lord, we could be the witness and testimony we need to be for you, Lord. Lord, we do thank you for our musicians, uh, guitarists, the piano players, flute, uh, violin, uh, Lord, we do thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for the talents that you've, you've given uh, our church members, Lord. Lord, we pray for our uh, other ministries, Brother Doug Wood, Len Crow and the Orphanages, Amazing Grace Baptist Church, uh, Brother Brandon's Bible Institute, Lord, Brother Fielder and, and wife, and, and uh, Brother Brown, the evangelist, Lord, as they were here before, Lord, and Lord, we do thank you for the blessing that they were. Lord, we pray for churches in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, Lord, and Bible-believing churches all over the world, Lord, that uh, stand, uh, stand on your word, Lord. Pray for Brother Robert Smith at Strange Creek Baptist Church. Lord, we pray for uh, Blessed Hope Baptist Church, Lord, and, and uh, their building project, Lord, that is on hold for now. We just pray, Lord, that you would undertake for that. Pray for Brother Rob at Liberty Baptist Church in their need of a building, Lord. And uh, Lord, pray that you would undertake for that as well. Lord, we pray for the Thren family. Uh, Brother Brian Green, seed for, the seed for the city ministry. Pray for the Gilbert family, Lord. And uh, Brother Chris Messick uh, as well and his family. Lord, we pray for uh, soul winning and our outreach, Lord, in the, our communities and towns and villages. And Lord, we just pray that uh, uh, we can be the witness and testimony we need to be for you, Lord. Lord, we do thank you for our live stream and, and uh, Brother Ed and uh, uh, what he does there, Lord. And, and Lord, we just pray for more people to watch. And uh, Lord, as people have been watching all over the world, Lord, and we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we pray for Sunday school, ladies, men's, teens, youth fellowship, Lord, and, and Lord, we need... Uh, we need fellowship, Lord, and uh, the more as the day approaches, Lord. Pray for uh, the card, the puppet, and the sign ministry, Lord, as the weather uh, is going to get better, Lord, and, and warmer, that we can go out and, and hold signs and, and uh, pass out tracks, Lord. Uh, we do thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we pray for our special care home ministry uh, tomorrow night, Lord. Lord, I just ask that you be with me and, and with everyone, Lord, as we... Uh, we go in there, Lord, to put forth your word and, and, and to fellowship, Lord, and, and we thank you for the blessing that that ministry is, Lord. Lord, we do thank you for the van you've supplied, and Lord, we just pray now that you would, uh, 
you would give us a ministry for it, Lord, and that uh, we would fill that van every Sunday, Lord. Lord, we thank you for it. You are so good to us, Lord. Lord, we pray for our missionaries, uh, the Nisley family in Woodstock, and their building, Lord, and, and what a, a blessing that was, Lord. The property and the building, we do thank you, Lord. Pray for the Shoal family in Greenland uh, and their ministry, Lord. Lord, we pray for Joel and Holly Buckingham and family and uh, their need of a building, Lord, and their opportunity uh, for this building, Lord. Pray that the, the financing comes through, Lord, and, and that the price comes down. Lord, we know you are able, and we thank you, Lord. Pray for Brother Joey, uh, Ring and family in Kempville. Uh, Brother Matt, El Bethel Bible Camp, Lord, and, and the projects going on, the new bathrooms, and, and uh, uh, Lord, we just pray we see the tabernacle this year. I just pray, Lord, that you would undertake for that, Lord. Pray for Brother Jing Batak at the Bai Nihans Children Home and uh, that orphanage, Lord, and, and all those orphans, Lord, and what an undertaking uh, for Brother Jing. Lord, I just pray that you strengthen him and help him, Lord. Uh, we do thank you for uh, the blessing he is and, and what he's doing down there, Lord. Lord, I pray for Brother Bud and uh, Silent Word Ministry out of Bridgewater, and just pray that, Lord, you keep him safe and his family as he travels, Lord. Pray for the Jenkins family in Ireland, their ministry, Lord. Uh, David Muckle family of Snow Lake, uh, Blake Muscott family and the Lifeline ministry, uh, Miss Melanie Ellis in Papua New Guinea, and it was a, a blessing to meet her, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Pray for the mu Mustard family uh, in West Africa. Pray for Brother Caesar uh, and his family, Lord, and his Spanish ministry, Lord. We thank you for our missionaries, Lord, and as we get uh, close to our uh, Faith Promise Mission Conference, Lord, that, uh, Lord, you would just undertake for that, Lord, and, and uh, Lord, we are a church with a heart for missions. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we pray for Canada, salvation and wisdom for our leaders, uh, and uh, for your mercy as well, Lord. Lord, we pray that, uh, Lord, they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. Uh, Lord, we know you are able. Pray for Christians to stand firm. Lord, we pray for our health care system and our school system, Lord, as they seem to be uh, very broken, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you would undertake for that and just, Lord, protect those school children and, Lord, protect uh, the people that don't have a doctor, Lord. And, Lord, we just pray that you would undertake for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for many blessings in our lives. Lord, in our health needs, our cancer list, pray for Heinz, Alex Henderson, Kelly, Trina's sister-in-law, uh, Diane's sister-in-law, Kim, Teresa, Daniel Wood, Killam, Fred Maxwell, Neil Lewis, Miranda Ching, uh, Kevin McNutt, Paul Everill, and Carol Shaw. Uh, pray, Lord, that uh, you would undertake for, for our cancer list, Lord, and, and just help in that situation, Lord. And Lord, we know you are the great healer, the great physician. Lord, in our other health needs, pray for Miss Nett's eye. Lord, uh, strange re request, Lord, but pray that it acts up when she's at the at the doctors, Lord, so that they can see what's going on, Lord. And Lord, just pray that you would undertake for that, and that it would get uh, it would get resolved, Lord. We do thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for Jack and Diane. Pray for our brother Perry. Uh, he's watching at home, and Miss Wanda as well. And our appointment this, uh, the second, uh, 18th, and 25th. Lord, we pray for the, that appointment, Lord, that all would go well. Pray for brother uh, Dave Gagnon and Miss Cheryl as they. They travel and, and uh, back and forth to Halifax, Lord. And I just pray for that situation, Lord, that you would answer according to your perfect will. Uh, pray for pastors, parents, David and Sharon Reed, as they're getting up in age, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you would uh, come alongside and, and help them, Lord, protect them. We do thank you for them, Lord. Lord, pray for uh, Brother Ed's father, uh, Ernie. Uh, pray for Miss Gay uh, as well, Lord. Uh, Miss Rhonda, pray for Brother Bruce Bragg on, on the road traveling, Lord, and, and how stressing it is and, and hard on the body. We just pray, Lord, that you keep him safe. Pray for Terry Little, uh, Tammy Wheaton, Helen L. Uh, pray for Miss Taylor's uh, 
CT on the 28th, Lord, and pray that uh, she would get her surgery uh, faster, Lord, as, as uh, it seems to her knee is acting up again, Lord. We just pray, Lord, you would undertake for that. Pray for Larry Langell. Pray for Brett and his need of a uh, family doctor. Lord, we pray uh, that, Lord, uh, you would help him with that as it would progress his uh, recovery, Lord. And we do pray for that, Lord, that you would undertake in that situation, Lord. Pray for Marilyn McKinnon, uh, Magellan Wyatt, uh, as they're out west, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would just uh, undertake for them come alongside, Lord, and help them. Pray for Jeff's appointment, uh, April 2nd and 17th. Pray for Brother Mark McGahey and, uh, and his situation with his heart, Lord. I pray that you keep him strong, Lord, and, and keep him preaching. Pray for our pastor, um, Lord, that you would undertake for, for him as well, Lord, and keep him healthy. Uh, Lord, we pray for Shelley Stevens' surgery on May 6th. Pray for our brother Conrad. And his knee, Lord, that you would uh, you would help him, Lord, and and I know he's had surgery, and and just help him to to take it easy, Lord, and and uh, to heal up, Lord. We do thank you uh, for that situation, Lord. Pray for brother, uh, or pray for Bruce Graham and CT scan, uh, Lord. We just pray that you would undertake for that. Uh, pray for Betty, uh, Lou McLeod. Pray for Nancy Coates, as uh, a little while back she had a, a mini stroke. I want to pray that you would undertake for that. Pray for Miss Missy as she's out tonight and not feeling well, Lord. Just pray, Lord, that you would uh, uh, help her, Lord, and, and that she's feeling better. Pray for Miss Diane Bragg, Barb Tupper, uh, Trina's sister Natasha. Pray for Brother Ed's liver uh, and the situation, Lord. I just pray that you'd undertake for that. Uh, pray for Mary uh, McKenzie recovering from wrist surgery. Pray, Lord, that you would help in that situation well. Miss Dina Bird and her uh, her knees, Lord. Just pray, Lord, that you would undertake for that. Pray for Carson uh, uh, and Lord Carson Campbell and uh, his situation, Lord. And I just pray that, Lord, you would undertake. Pray for Miss Alice King, Lord, as she's in palliative care, Lord, and and not expected to. To, uh, uh, to come out of there, Lord, we just pray that, Lord, you would undertake for that. Lord, we pray for the Dubois family, as they're not feeling well. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Brother Phil and, and Miss Cindy and the loss of the, their mother. I just pray, Lord, that you would undertake for that family and just help in that situation, Lord. Uh, pray for Charity Hopkins and her uh, cellulitis, Lord, and broken wrist, Lord, I pray that you would uh, touch her body and heal her, Lord, and help her in that situation, Lord. Lord, we pray for Carson and his blood pressure, uh, his heart murmur, and his acid reflux, Lord. I just pray that, Lord, you give the doctors great wisdom and help in treating that situation, Lord. Lord, we thank you for being the great physician, the great healer. Lord, in our miscellaneous, pray for Clarence and Bethany and the appointment on the 2nd uh, and the 18th. Pray for safe travels on the 2nd, Lord. Uh, as Miss Trina's taken uh, Miss Bethany up, just pray, Lord, that uh, it would go without a hitch and that, Lord, that uh, Clarence would find someone on the 18th to take her as well, Lord. Lord, pray for church heat pumps, uh, our homeschooled kids, Lord, uh, that you would just help in that situation, Lord, uh, and help the parents as well, Lord. Lord, we all need family doctors. I just pray, Lord, that uh, there be no, more doctors in, in Nova Scotia and our areas, Lord, as it seems that uh, doctors are retiring uh, every day, Lord, and it's just getting worse and worse. I pray, Lord, that you would, you would undertake for that, Lord. Lord, I pray for David and Ashley and their families, Lord, and, and their need of, of you, Lord, and uh, taking the kids to Sunday school. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would undertake for that. Pray for Scott Mahoney at the uh, toll booth, Lord, and just pray that we would see him, Lord, if, if, uh, if he was uh, uh, serious about coming, Lord, I pray that you'd convict his heart, Lord, and, and, and get him here, Lord. Lord, we pray for Miss Diane's car uh, to sell, Lord, and uh, uh, all that situation, Lord, with paperwork, and, and, and uh, we thank you, Lord, and just ask that you would, you would help in that situation. Pray for Shelley Stevens' house to sell. 
pray for Brother Ed's clients, Lord, and, and uh, that uh, he would have more clients, and, and we do thank you for that, Lord, and, and just ask, Lord, that you would help help him and, and, uh, and uh, his family as well, Lord. Pray for Miss Amelia's job opportunity, and uh, just pray, Lord, that th that comes through with Kent, and uh, she can work in the, uh, the floral uh, greenhouse uh, type of job, Lord. Uh, hope she has a green thumb. I pray, Lord, that you would undertake that situation. Pray for uh, Zachary Church. Uh, pray for Carter as well, Lord. Uh, and uh, Trina traveling uh, on March 31st uh, when she's leaving here to take uh, Miss Bethany to to uh, uh, Montreal. Pray for safe travels, Lord. Lord, Lord, we pray for the Osteen family. Uh, Eric King, Lord, as Alice King is his mother. I just pray for him, Lord, that you would comfort him, Lord, and uh, comfort him in this, this time, Lord. Lord, we pray for a will traveling, Lord, and uh, give him safety as he travels. Lord, we pray for all involved in the, in the bridge collapse and, and the families, and, and Lord, we just pray that, uh, that this bridge uh, that collapsed, Lord, that you would comfort the family, Lord, and, and that, Lord, uh, uh, some good would come out of this, Lord, that people would come to know you as, as Lord and Savior. Lord, we just thank you for how you've undertaken for so much for us, Lord. Lord, we pray for our unspoken list, Liz, Bruce, myself, John and Jessica, uh, Helen Graham, Colleen, Trina, Delphine, uh, Jeremiah, uh, Rhonda, and Miss Diane uh, Bragg, Lord, as... Uh, uh, we have unspoken, Lord, and we just pray that you answer according to your perfect will, Lord. Lord, we thank you for uh, the opportunity to come here tonight, Lord, unobstructed and without persecution, Lord. And, and Lord, we thank you that uh, you are a God that hears and answers prayer, and, and we are a church that prays, Lord. I just pray now, Lord, as we get ready for, for your word, Lord, that you use our pastor in a mighty way. Hide him behind the cross. Give him boldness. The words to say, Lord, and the power to say them, Lord. And Lord, we do thank you for, for loving us, Lord. We love you. Lord, be careful to honor and praise you, Lord. Uh, and Lord, we just we thank you for everything you do and how you've given us so much, Lord. Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the glory tonight, Lord. And Lord, as we get ready to hear your word, I pray that we come with open hearts and minds, ready to receive what you have for us. We do thank you, Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I guess I should have mentioned too, it's not just uh, Brother Phil and Miss Cindy, but uh, Miss Brenda Conrad as well and Chris Pam Sis. Uh, it's her mother, so if you could uh, just keep that family in your prayers, I know that they would appreciate it. Take your Bibles tonight, we're going to Matthew chapter number 27, <clears throat> Matthew uh, chapter 27, and uh, we're going to work our way through a lot of this chapter tonight, but uh, we're just going to start off by reading verses 27 down through verse number 31, Matthew chapter 27, <clears throat> starting in, uh, in verse, number, uh, verse number 27, the Bible says, and uh, then the, the, the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the, into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on, put on him a scarlet robe, and when they had uh, plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand, uh, and they bowed the knee before him, and mocked him, saying, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. And uh, we'll stop there for, for now. Let's pray, and we'll get into the message tonight. Lord, I thank you for your word. And I pray you'd use it to speak to our hearts tonight. 
Lord, we know uh, there's a lot of different uh, focuses that people go to uh, this, uh, this season. And Lord, I pray you'd help us just to focus in on a minute on the cross and the sacrifice of it, the cost of it. And Lord, we, we just uh, pray that you'd, uh, you'd help us tonight. Lord, I need your help as I preach. Give me the words to say. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Clear my thoughts. And uh, Lord, I, I pray that you'd just work in each one of our hearts tonight. Well, thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Or you can be seated. You know, it's, it's interesting. Everything, uh, you know, some people think, oh, uh, something's free. Oh, it's free. You know, everybody likes something that's free. I like free things. I mean, when we were, uh, you know, right now it's roll up the rim season at Tim Hortons. I want a $60 Tim card rolling up the rim. Man, that's, that's, I was in high, when I was in high school, I went to Tim Hortons coffee maker and uh, from then till now, I think that's the, the most, uh, the biggest thing I've won uh, through the Tim Hortons uh, roll up the rim. When we go to Teen Thunder, it's always roll up the rim season. And uh, we get coffee, Dave and I, that's our job in the mornings. We go and uh, make a big coffee order. We got three or four trays of coffee coming back for people. And uh, us, the adults that go to Teen Thunder, that's how we survive. <laughs> we, we drink a lot of coffee. And so we, what we try to do is it's roll up the rim season, so... Uh, our goal is to get Friday for free. And so when it's Friday, we have all the roll up the rim uh, coffees we've won. We upgrade to extra larges for everybody. And uh, this year we had just enough to get everybody a coffee for free. But you know what? For the most part, nothing is free. <laughs> nothing is free. There's Everything has a price. And uh, people, you know, they get, uh, they get money from the government every week. There's some people who sit at home, you know, and, and do nothing when they could be doing something. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know, there's certain times where that's, that's okay. But there's some people who just sit around and do absolutely nothing and get a check from the government. But that's not, and they think, oh, it's free. You know, when COVID happened and they had all that CERB and all that kind of stuff, people sat at home and did nothing. They got money from the government and said, oh, it's free. And now they have to pay it back. <laughs> a lot of them are having to pay it back. Nothing is free. But even that, some people who sit home on, on uh, different social assistance and things like that, you know, us that go to work, we pay tax, and they get the money. Nothing is free. Uh, not, nothing is free. You think of the, you think of the cross. You know, the, the gift of salvation is free, but there was a cost. There was a cost to the cross. You know, it's Easter time, Easter season. And, and uh, the, whole, uh, the whole event of the, of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it gets blurred by chocolate eggs and, and apparently bunnies that lay chocolate eggs and uh, all of these kind of things, it's all blurred. You know, it's, uh, it's funny when I think of, every time I think about Easter bunnies, I think of my nephew, he was, I don't know, his name's Parker, he was maybe six years old, seven years old, and there was a commercial on the TV for chocolate bunnies. And the chocolate bunnies were hopping across the screen, and uh, he turned to us after the commercial was done, and he said, chocolate can't hop. <laughs> no, it can't, and it can't lay eggs either. So, there, you know, this, but the whole thing of, of, of this, the Easter season, Christmas season, all these seasons, they get blurred by the world's agenda and the world's, uh, the world's thoughts of how things should go and all of these kind of things. You know, the, the, the price was paid, but over 2,000 years ago, it was paid in full. The price of the cross. You know, it, it begs a question, though, that needs to be answered is what was the price? What was the price and how was it paid? And so what we want to do is go down through this chapter tonight and look at a few different things that our salvation has cost. And so the first one is in verses 1 to 4. And our salvation has a cost of perfection. If you look at uh, starting in verses one, uh, verse 1 down to verse 4, it says, When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, uh, the governor, then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he, had, when he saw that he, uh, was condem that, uh, that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed innocent blood. And they, sa and, and they said, what is that to us? See thou, see, see thou to that. He says, I betrayed innocent blood. G Judas realized at this point what he had done. 
What he had done. He said Jesus was, he's perfect. He never did anything wrong. He doesn't deserve to be crucified. Uh, there, there was perfection. The cost of, of perfection, our salvation cost that. Because we're not perfect. <laughs> we're not perfect. You and I, we have a sin problem. <laughs> we were born that way. We have a sin problem. And uh, we, we're born separate from God. You know, God, He's, uh, he's holy. He's perfect. He's just. He's righteous. And we can't come to God because we're not holy, perfect, just, and righteous. Sin and God, they just don't go together. They don't go together. And you think, God, God made a solution though, didn't He? God made a solution, the perfect sacrifice, a sacrifice that was holy, perfect, just, and righteous, and that is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. John 1 and verse 29 says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. What a blessing. The, the cost of you, your salvation and mine is perfection. You and I can, can never pay the sin debt that we owe. We can't do it. But Jesus, the holy, spotless Lamb, the perfect Lamb of God, He's the one that could pay that sin debt. You know, I think, uh, I think about Judas here, and I remember uh, on, um, on Sunday, I think it was, I was uh, Sunday night, I was in the, in the office there getting ready for... Uh, uh, for the evening service, and Brother Ed came in, and I was reading, uh, reading some things in Acts chapter one. I was reading a couple things in Acts in Acts chapter one, and it talks about. Uh, if you go over there just for a moment, it talks about Judas a little bit there. Starting in uh, verse number fifteen, it says, "In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about a hundred and twenty." Uh, men and brethren, this, uh, this scripture must needs uh, be the, uh, have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake uh, before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was murdered, uh, or for, sorry, he was numbered with us uh, and obtained part uh, of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst. And all his bowels gushed out. That's, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> Judas, you know, back in our, in our passage here in Matthew, he, he's coming back and he's trying to say, you know what, I, I did wrong. Just take this back from me. Take the money. I, I, don't, I don't want anything to do with this. But it tells us, uh, it tells us even in, in back in Matthew chapter 27, it says uh, in verse number 5, and he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the pieces of silver and said, it's not lawful for, uh, for, to, be, for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. You know, just a little bit of a side note here, but with Judas, you think about him for a moment. What a, what a, a, a fall he had. You know, being one of the twelve, seeing this perfect spotless Lamb of God in His ministry, doing, uh, heading to the cross to die for His sin, just as much as the rest of ours, betrayed Jesus for a bag of coins. <laughs> and He didn't even hang on to them very long. He killed Himself shortly thereafter. And, and it says here that, it, that He just hung Himself. But that, that little bit more here in Acts, it, it, it just stuck out to me. It stuck out to me saying, you know, it's... Uh, it, his, his bowels gushed out. <laughs> Man, he had a bad end, didn't he? But you know what? The thing is, is our salvation, it, it cost some things. Jesus had to die for our sins. But he, he, you know, he's, he's different than the rest of us. You know, he, he was uh, born of a virgin. None of us were born of a virgin. None of us lived. We were, he was the only one that lived a perfect and sinless life. You know, when he lived on this earth, he, uh, he healed and helped and loved and, and did, did, uh, did the work of the Father while he was here. Yet that night in the garden, he was, uh, he was grabbed, he was brought uh, to that, that, that court of the priests, brought there by a bloodthirsty mob led by Judas. <laughs> Man, you know what the reason for that was? You go, go to verse uh, number 18 back in Matthew 27. It tells you the reason why. All of this. It says, for he knew that for envy 
they had delivered him. All these religious leaders, they wanted Jesus off the scene because they envied him. You know, people liked Jesus. There were some people that really liked him. He had some people that followed. You read of, a, you read of stories where, where all these people followed him and they, they, they loved Jesus and they wanted to be around him and all of those kind of things. And, and these, uh, the, the chief priests and all the religious leaders of those days, they wanted the spotlight and they knew that Jesus was a threat to that. <laughs> they were, they, he was a threat to, uh, to the power that they had. They envied Jesus. And they brought him to his death. You know, there's a lot of evidence of Jesus' perfection. Not only G Judas and his, uh, his claim uh, that, that uh, he, he denied that innocent blood, but if you, if you go down through uh, this chapter a little bit further, look, uh, look in verses 23, uh, in ver verse 23 and 24. It says, And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could uh, prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Even Pilate, he knew that Jesus was innocent. He knew that he was perfect. Look at verse number 19. This one uh, jumped out to me again. I, I don't know that I've uh, I've actually noticed this one before. Look in verse number 19. It says, When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with, this just, with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Even his wife knew that Jesus was perfect. Knew that Jesus was innocent. There was all of this proof. But the cost of our salvation took that perfection. It needed that perfection. You say, well, what, why? Well, Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That wage, that penalty for sin, the only option for us is death. But the perfect sacrifice of the perfect Lamb of God, that's the cost of our of our salvation. That's the only solution for the sin problem that we have. He had to die. But all of the, I, it never ceases to amaze me when I, when I go back and I look into these things and think of all of those people, Judas along with him this whole time, just let Satan have a little bit of a foothold in his life. Satan came in him, saw an opportunity, and, and, and I'm sure Satan was shouting the victory. Oh, we got him now. We got him now. When he's on the cross, I'm sure Satan's out in the victory. Oh, he's dead. We got him now. <laughs> then when he comes out of the, out of the grave, man, he's, just imagine the look on his face. Oh, we, we lost. <laughs> we, man, I don't know what to do now. Where do I, what do I do now? <laughs> do nothing. That's what you should do. <laughs> the penalty was paid. The penalty for your sin and mine, it was paid. It costed perfection. It costed perfection. Not only does our salvation have a cost of perfection, but our salvation has a cost of substitution. Look at verse number 15 back in Matthew 27. He says, Now at the feast of the governor was, uh, was wont to release... Uh, sorry. Now at the feast the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they, ha uh, and they had then a, a notable prisoner named Barabbas. Uh, therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? Then jump down to verse, uh, verse number 20. It says, The chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of, whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. You know, our salvation, it cost, there was a cost of a substitution. You know, this, whole, this is the whole reason why Jesus came, to be our substitute. 
to, to take on uh, the penalty for our sin. There's a penalty. God's law had to, be, uh, had to be satisfied. Sin had to be punished. Or else God's not God. God's, God says sin had to be punished. God's law had to be fulfilled. But you know what? Your death and mine... Man, uh, we, we could fill the penalty, it would be death. But Jesus came and was the substitute for us. So that we didn't have to face death at a cost of substitution. You know, our sin, our, our sin would eternally separate us from God. And, and God, that's not God's intention for us to be uh, permanently separated from Him. He, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that cost was a cost of substitution. What God did was take the place of every sinner on the planet. Every sinner that was and ever will be. He paid that sin debt that day on the cross. He, he took the, their punishment. You, you think of, uh, of Barabbas. Jesus took his cross. Jesus took his cross. 1 Peter 3 and verse number 18 says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Back in our text in verse number 21, verse number 21, I think we read verse 21 already, we'll just uh, pick it up at verse number 24. It says, When Pilate saw he could prevail nothing, but that rather the tumult was made, he took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this person. See ye to it. Jesus took, this is what's being talked about in First Peter. The just for the unjust. Jesus took Barabbas' cross. <laughs> he was set free. You, you think about that for just a moment. The, the description there. He, he, you, know what, you know what Barabbas didn't do? You know, when I, when I read this, I thought of uh, a parallel between him and us, uh, uh, the unsaved. You know, he, uh, he got to go free because Jesus died in his place. That's what he did for us. You know, we don't see, he, we don't see Barabbas cleaning his life up first and then saying, oh yeah, Jesus, you know, uh, but just don't let me go yet. Let me clean my life up first and then I'll, then I'll go free. We don't see that happening there. We don't see him starting to go to church for, oh, just let me, go, let me go in this rehab program or go to this church or something like that. I'll get things, then Jesus can die for me. We didn't see that. You know what I see Barabbas from? He's just running out of there as soon as he possibly can. I get to go free? I'm out of here. Jesus took his place. Think about us as, uh, as, uh, as sinners on our way to hell. Jesus took our place. Paid the penalty for our sin. And you accept Him as Savior and you get to go free. You don't have to straighten your life up first. You don't have to go to church first. Just, just go free. <laughs> accept Him as Savior and start living your life for Christ. There was a substitution and Jesus was that substitution. He took your place and mine. What a picture of the substitute that Jesus is for us and the penalty for sin. He took Barabbas' cross. Our salvation has a cost. <laughs> and there's a perfect substitute for that cross, and it's Jesus Christ. You know, I think about the, our salvation has a cost of perfection, a cost of substitution. It also has a cost of submission. If you go to verse 27, we'll pick it up in verse number 27, where we, where we started reading tonight. We won't, we won't read that section again, but if you think about that for just a moment. They took him to the hall. They started to, to, to beat him and torture him and ridicule him and do all of those things. He went all the way through all of that torture and all of that agony. And he yielded to them. He submitted to them. You don't see him fighting back. You don't see him screaming in agony and pain. You don't see him uh, trying to put up a fuss or anything. You see him take the stripes. You see him take the thorns. You see him take, take the ridicule. You see him take the cross. You ever see him complain about it? <laughs> no, he goes to the cross. He, 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 uh, he submitted to that, that, that death that he had, to, he had to die for us. You think of a parent. A parent. Their child gets kidnapped. They would pay any price to get that child back. 
God's, God's uh, creations are kidnapped by sin. And he paid the ultimate price to get his children back. That price was, was Jesus Christ. And Jesus, was, uh, Jesus submitted to that plan. And you think, uh, you, you think about the, this whole situation as you work your way down through here. Go back to uh, Matthew chapter 26 just for a moment. It didn't just start here. It started earlier. Matthew 26. We'll read verse, uh, verse number 39. Matthew 26 verse 39 says and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as thou wilt you think of that in that garden of Gethsemane (laughs) he sweat drops of blood because of this situation he says Lord if there's any other way but if there's not I'll do it I will submit to your plan You jump down to verse number uh, 53. It says, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the Scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? And he he said, you know, I could have called ten thousand angels. I could, have, I could have done, I could have done, uh, we, I could have got out of this. Why haven't I slipped away from you in the past? Haven't I, you know, it wasn't my time then, but now's the time. He, he submitted to them. He yielded to, to, to the plan. <laughs> Submission. That, that, uh, he didn't want to do this. This is not pleasant for him. You know, he was a man just as much as we are. Felt all those things. Wasn't a pleasant thing. All the way through that torture, the agony of the cross, our Savior yielded to the price that had to be paid for our redemption. You know, uh, like, like I said, a parent, kid cat kidnapped, they would pay any price. God came down in flesh and paid the price. He paid it willingly. He paid it wholeheartedly. The, the priest, they beat Jesus. The next day, the, the soldiers come in and the, the passage that we read, they strip Him. They whip him, they, 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 they break him, they put that robe and mock him, the crown of thorns on his head. They put a reed in his hand, they, 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 they make fun of him, then they nail him to a cross. <laughs> and yet you know, we never hear him cry out, I'm not guilty, <laughs> this isn't right. He just took whatever they threw at him. He took took whatever a man could do to him. He's mocked, humiliated as the Son of God. They said, if he was God's Son, couldn't he do something about this? They mocked him, but he submitted to all that. Couldn't he do something? Well, he could. But if you and I were to be saved, there's nothing he could do. He had to die. He had to die for you and for me. To save others, he had to sacrifice his own life. What, a, what, a, what an act of submission. We don't like to submit to things. We don't like to submit to authority. We don't like to submit to, to our parents. We don't like to submit to the law. We don't like to submit to, to anything that goes against our, uh, our will. We don't want to submit to God. Yet Jesus gave us the ultimate example of submission. None of us would do what Jesus did. We wouldn't even ask, Lord, take this from me. We'd just say, I'm not doing it. But Jesus submitted to the plan. Jesus submitted to the Father. And He went to the end for you and for me. There's a cost of submission. But there's a cost of completion. We talked about this just a moment ago. Number four, cost our salvation costs a cost of completion. He could have stopped at any time he wanted. He could, he could have just, you know, flick of the wrist and they're all passed out somewhere and he'd just walk away. <laughs> he, he could just take himself somewhere else and be over. He on the cross could just come down from there. But he didn't do that. Because our salvation costs the cost of completion. Go to verse number 45. 
Matthew 27, verse, starting in verse number 45. It says, now the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land under the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put, a re- put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let, uh, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Cost of completion. Go over to John uh, chapter number 19. And we get that uh, Jesus saying it's complete over there. John, John chapter 19. John chapter 19, verse number, well, start in verse number 28. It says, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a, a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head. And gave up the ghost. The cost of our salvation. Cost. Completion. Jesus said it's finished. He defeated sin's power that day. He defeated Satan's power that day. The satisfaction of God's requirements was fulfilled that day. The job was done. Christ came to do a job and to finish that job. All of our eternity hanged on whether Christ would complete his his task or not. And thank God he did. Thank God that He did. There's nothing more for us to do than to accept Him as Savior. We've got to realize why He died. He died for our sins. We need to turn from those sins and accept Christ as Savior. Accept the full payment, the completed cost of our sin. You know, there's a lot of false teachers out there that would try to tell us and convince people that Jesus didn't pay at all. Don't let anybody fool you. Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Man, he, that completion, it is finished. So now He didn't pay for most of our sins. No, He paid for all of our sins. What a slap in our Savior's face to say, you didn't pay it all. I've got to do something for this. If there was some other way Why would he go and die on a cross? There is no other way. You know, we are the ones that Christ came to die for. (laughs) Don't substitute his perfect payment with our efforts. We, We try to complicate, I said this on Sunday, we try to complicate the gospel sometimes. Try to add to this and do that and complicate these things. But it's just as simple as he came and he died for you and for me. He rose again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The completed work, it is finished. There's nothing you and I can do. He did it all. Our salvation cost a cost of completion. I hope you realize the cost of the cross. The cost of our salvation. You know, it's free for you and me. And I am thankful for that. I'm thankful that it's the free gift of salvation to anybody. Whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, it's free for you and me, but the cost was high. The cost was high. Uh, I'm so glad Jesus was our perfect substitute. That He submitted and completed the task. And when I think about this, I can't help but think about a song that I want to give you as we finish up tonight. A song song we've sang before, but it's called, It Is Finished. It says, there's a line that's been drawn through the ages. On that line stands the old rugged cross. On that cross, a battle is raging for the gain of man's soul or its loss. On the one side, march the forces of evil. 
All the demons and devils of hell. On the other, the angels of glory. And they meet on Golgotha's hill. The earth shakes with the force of the conflict. The sun refuses to shine. For there hangs God's son in the balance. And then through the darkness he cries, It's finished! The battle is over. It is finished! There will be no more war. It is finished! The end of the conflict. It's finished and Jesus is Lord. It says, a couple more verses say, Yet in my heart the battle was raging. Not all prisoners of war have come home. These were battlefields of my own making. I didn't know that the war had been won. Then I heard the king of the ages had fought all the battles for me. And victory was mine for the claiming. And now, praise his name, I am free. It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There will be no more war. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished. And Jesus is Lord. Oh. What, a, what a blessing. What a blessing. You know, there's a cost for our salvation. But praise the Lord, he paid it in full. And it, 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 when he says it's finished, it's done. He did it all. I hope you realize tonight the cost of the cross. Don't take it for granted. We come into this, this Easter season. Don't get all diluted with Easter bunnies and chocolate eggs. But take a minute and remember the cross. These next few days, remember the cross. Remember, uh, remember his body in the tomb. Remember him on, re resurrecting from the dead. I, ca I can't wait for Sunday morning. <laughs> I can't wait to, to get our focus in on, 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 on our risen Savior. <laughs> it's not Easter Sunday, it's Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And I'm thankful for a, a living Savior today. How's that song go? He lives within my heart. I know that he is living no matter what men may say. I'm messing it up. How does it start off? I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living no matter what men may say. Uh, I see his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. And ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And I hope he lives within your heart tonight as well. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for your sacrifice on Calvary's cross. I pray you'd help us not to forget. Not to forget the, the, the wounds that, that, were, that you were given Lord, the time you spent on the cross separated from the Father. Lord, your precious blood that was shed. Lord, I pray as we go into the, this, uh, this Easter weekend, Resurrection Sunday, that you keep our focus on you. Lord, I'm thankful that you live within my heart. And if there's somebody here tonight that doesn't know you as Savior, I pray they'd accept you today. They'd realize the sacrifice that you made for them. Lord, accept you as their Savior tonight. Well, thank you for what you're going to do. 